Hi, my name is Adrian, and I'm here to talk to you about a brand new open source framework. So I'm going to first tell you a little bit about sort of the space in the Python data and machine learning ecosystem that we see Streamlit filling and the problem that we're trying to solve. And then uh, you guys are all going to be able to install it and play with it. Uh, and then we're going to build a cool app. And then I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of the really deep motivating examples for building Streamlit. To, to sort of motivate that, I'll tell you a little bit about my background. So I was a professor at Carnegie Mellon University for eight years, and I did a whole lot of machine learning and big data stuff. And then I went to Google X, and I ran a machine learning group there uh, working on natural language systems. Then I went to Zoox, uh, which is a $4 billion self-driving car company, uh, and again, uh, ran a big machine learning group there. And then uh, I saw at all of those companies the same kinds of problems sort of happening over and over again. And so um, that's why I started Streamlit with some friends in 2018. So what was this problem that I was uh, seeing over and over again and that hopefully you guys might be sort of aware of too? Basically, when people typically talk about the industrial machine learning workflow at Uber or something like that, what they're saying is that we have some data and then we perform training on that data and we build models and then eventually we put those models in production and it's all very complicated and we have to build lots of software to support this entire ecosystem. This is definitely a very real, difficult, important part of the machine learning sort of uh, you know, pipeline. And uh, in fact, there's a whole crop of like amazing startups in this space right now, uh, working on different aspects of this pipeline and trying to be a horizontal layer or take off different vertical pieces. And so I'm actually really excited that like in a couple of years, this whole process is gonna look totally different and way less bespoke than it does today. But notwithstanding this sort of major production pipeline, the thing that I really saw as a machine learning practitioner and I saw again and again on Teams is that machine learning engineers are actually app makers. That is, they often build a large number of uh, bespoke apps, both to demonstrate data, like actually the previous session uh, in this room sort of demonstrated some, some simple panel apps to do that also to sort of provide the interstitial structure for the machine learning group in, in, in order to look at, you know, parse large data sets, uh, coordinate with uh, other members of the team to see how models run on different data sets. There's internal tooling to do that. And then also to project sort of the power of the machine learning group out throughout the organization. Um, so we're, we're working with a big company right now to allow machine learning engineers to directly build apps that empower 100,000 salespeople to make real-time recommendations. So these are the kinds of apps that we saw again and again being built by machine learning engineers and really seeing that this was actually a major pain point in the process. Okay, so what typically happens in this case? So I'm gonna give you the example of Zoox. So we had about uh, 80 machine learning engineers building self-driving cars. This is everything from the planning system to vision, pedestrian detection, the entire self-driving stack, basically. So an example of a tool that we would have to write would be um, something that would allow us to take two simulations of the self-driving car and run them at the same time and compare them to one another. So typically, this kind of tool would start off as like a solo programming project for a single engineer. Uh, he or she is doing some work, maybe in a Jupyter notebook, they are actually running the simulations. Lo and behold, this is the typical engineering you know, cycle. Gosh, I'm doing this over and over again. I should automate this more and more. So maybe we copy and paste it into a script, check it into GitHub. Now there's a way of running this app. And inevitably what happens in this case is that if the tool is important, if a lot of people need to use it, all of a sudden it becomes a central focus point for the group and now we need to add new features every single week and the app wasn't designed to be like a well-designed app that you can really add features to readily and so you get into this unmaintainability trap. So then what we would do at a certain point if a tool was really used by a lot of people on the team is we would call the tools team and this is a group of people who uh, they were sort of an internal infrastructure team for the company and they were really sort of subject matter experts in building 
web apps. And so they, were, they had expertise in uh, React or Vue and, and how you build the entire stack. And they would follow the sort of standard app building flow, which is to collect requirements and lay out these things and wire them together with the various events and so on, then code it up. And you would get a very beautiful app at this point, usually. Uh, very fast and, and you know had all the correct features and so on and so forth, which was amazing. But then they'd say, okay, uh, we just built your app for your team. We'll get back to you in a couple months because we we're supporting 10 other teams. So what we got to was this sort of like frozen zone where the, the problem was uh, machine learning engineers either couldn't edit these apps, um, or I should say really didn't want to, um, or they did, but it was at great, great, it, took, it was really time consuming. So, so that's really the observation about the state of this sort of really crucial workflow in the world. And so with that background, I'm now going to take you through first, what is Streamlit? And then we'll all get to play with it a little bit. All right. So what is Streamlit? Streamlit is an app framework for machine learning engineers and data scientists specifically. And the starting point for Streamlit was very different from, I think, most app frameworks out there. We basically asked ourselves, what if we could make building these kinds of internal tools and web apps that machine learning engineers and data scientists build as easy as writing Python scripts? So our fundamental assumption is that you are a Python programmer and that you um, are writing scripts in Python and that you use this sort of traditional script writing flow, which is iterative, execution from top to bottom. Of course, that can be changed in a Jupyter notebook. That's okay too. What you're not doing necessarily is starting with a layout and then trying to figure out an event model, right? It's much more about sort of a data flow transformation model in terms of how you build the apps. And what we wanted to do was build an amazing app framework that really started with this Python scripting idea. And so this is the app that I'm going to show you. And we're, gonna, we're not going to build all of it, but we'll build some of it at the very end. And what this is, is a, it's actually a data browser for self-driving car image data. In fact, there's a little semantic search engine up on the upper left there on the right. And you can select the number of sort of various semantic features and images, like number of pedestrians, and you can scrub through them. Um, and then you can actually run a network, a neural network, uh, in this case, YOLO v3, just an example, in real time on this data set. And this entire app is 300 lines of Python. And in fact, there are only 30 streamlet calls in the entire app. So the other 270 lines of Python are actually the neural net and all of the data processing. So you can imagine this is basically a data script, which has been slightly annotated to make it an interactive app. And that's really the goal here. 